Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros MLB. This is leading off the All-Star Special brought to you by Bet365. Bet five bucks, get 150 in bonus bets when you use that promo code leading off. It's me, Joey P. That, of course, is the Welsh and the Midsummer Classic is upon us. So Welsh and I decided to take it upon ourselves to declare our own All-Stars for the American League and National League from the Fantasy nerd point of view because that's how we like to look at things Nerds. so we're gonna put our nerd glasses on uh maybe some old man glasses too we'll see how it goes uh welsh is fresh off vacation so he is ready to go don't forget everybody we have got more specials for you so if you're watching this video on the youtube channel don't forget to click on our review of what happened at the futures game and also the mlb draft because welsh is the prospect guru so all you folks who are playing in Dynasty Leagues, but look, let's be honest, these guys are making a bigger impact faster than ever. Make sure you go find that video as well. Welsh, I'm going to let you start things off here with the National mm. League. Uh, we're going to go through, we're going to find our position players, we're going to find a couple pitchers, a closer as well, and a DH. And I know some of these names are going to overlap, but we're going to talk about these guys from a fantasy standpoint. So let's take a look at Welsh's all-star team for the National League. William Contreras at catcher. No doubt about that one. Certainly makes sense. Christian Walker at first base, perhaps surprising to some people. Bryce Terang at second. Ellie Dela Cruz, my dude at shortstop. Alec Bohm at third. Jackson Merrill, look at you. I love it. You snuck him in there. Brian Reynolds, who's been absolutely fantastic for the Pirates. Helio Ramos, look at this. Shohei Otani at DH, no brainer there. And Chris Sale, Zach Wheeler, the two pitchers with Ryan Helsley over at the closer spot. Let's start with the catcher here. William Contreras, because Welsh Contreras was absolutely red hot April, May. Then he's hit a little bit of a downturn of late, which was natural regression. You figure that's coming. Regardless, Contreras has been a great addition to this team in the last two years. Uh, the Milwaukee Brewers still find themselves at the top of the central. And Welsh, uh, the guy was in that MVP conversation for a few weeks. He's fallen off. So here's a question for you. Can he regain that momentum despite the fact that he plays catcher in the second half of this season, because we all know the wear and tear of that position's a lot. Yeah, we can. And he can. Absolutely. Um, when you look at the games played, there are a handful of catchers in the league right now that are like 80 plus games played. And uh, William Contreras, I think is at the tippy top. I think only Salvador Perez has ended up playing more. So can he? Yes. Uh, from a fantasy perspective on, you know, his production, it's actually tougher for the NL. I just want to point out because one of the things when we're doing these all-star uh, teams for fantasy, I think some people would be like, well, you know, okay, well, where's some of the values and whatnot? And it's like, well, at catcher, there was, I think, a lot more production out of the AL. This was between Will Smith and William Contreras for production. Con uh, Contreras, 11 homers, five stolen bases. Will Smith had 15 homers. They had the same amount of RBIs at 45, but William Contreras leads all catchers with runs at 65 and a better batting average. There was just nobody else in the NL that was really worthwhile from any type of fantasy perspective to push these guys so uh value be damned here william Contreras <laughs> at whatever cost he's the guy he is the he's been the most valuable catcher even though i was very like let's not take catchers super high this year he is the uh, catching all-star even with will smith having a few more homers now i think what people are gonna find interesting they put christian walker at first base here now technically christian walker does have more home runs than bryce harper 22 to 21 more rbi 66 to 61 now harper did miss a little time but uh, the batting average is much higher for Bryce Harper, and Freddie Freeman has a higher batting average as well, despite having less home runs. He does just about the same runs scored, more doubles, more triples, more hits overall. So how did you end up going Christian Walker at first base, you homer? Well, okay, yeah, it's a little bit homer, <laughs> but again, this is, think about this. This is a fantasy all-star game, so I okay. do believe relative where guys were drafted comes into some part of the part of the conversation. It's not okay. everything. So if you take that and you go, all right, Bryce Harper has essentially as many runs homers and RBI as Christian Walker in like 16 less games. That does mean something except Christian Walker was drafted exponentially later than Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper cost you a second round pick. He missed games. His production was amazing. Christian Walker was 
almost free, not like free, free, but like close to free, like outside right around that top 100 range of people were taking him. Uh, the batting average, a little bit stinky, but 22 homers, 66 RBIs, 58 runs. And guess what? They're not going to get him in the real all-star game. And that's going to be a shame. We'll get him here in the fantasy one. All right. Uh, to round out the infield, Elliot De La Cruz, we know how good he's been. Uh, Alec Bohm is out there too, but Bryce Terang is the other guy I want to talk about. And I get it because this is a guy that's got 30 stolen bases already hitting 277 here as of recording this, uh, as we're at the break. Now I mocked you and teased you about calling you a Homer, yeah. but you didn't pick Cattell Marte for this. And I'm going to argue Cattell Marte's numbers, 19 homers, 57 RBI, a 292 batting average at 877 OPS. Also, it came at a pretty decent value, I think, year over year in ADP. I get it. I get Terang with the 30 steals. I understand that. And I and I think it's a fun conversation. One, look, he's number two overall, right? So I, I get it. Like, I think that's that's fine. But at the same time, you, you snubbed your own Arizona Diamondbacks. So Christian Walker and him are going to have a weird time when they get back to the locker room, I feel like. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree. Like, this was a really, really tough one. And then Cattell kind of went off after we submitted these a little bit more. Uh, but again, I let the tiebreaker of this be the value. Cattell Marte and him and Trang were the only two I was deciding between on this. I know Jonathan India said a solid season. Didn't matter. Cattell's homers, runs, RBIs, batting average. It's all been elite. He's even been stealing some. It might be the guy. But again, if we put our fantasy hat back on, Bryce Terang was literally free, literally free. Not like, you know, figuratively, I'm like, hey, Christian Walker, anyone could have had him. No, Terang was like free, right. free, like not even drafted in a lot of spots. And what he's doing right now, he's low key putting up kind of a rookie season Corbin Carroll right now, 277, 30 stolen bases. He's got six homers, 45 runs, 38 RBI. He's going to finish... RBI totals won't really matter, but it's going to be elite, elite stolen bases, great batting average, maybe 100 runs and double-digit homers. That's going to borderline a top three-round player in fantasy at the end of the year, and he was literally not drafted in some spots on opening mm -hmm. day. So you're right. Cattell and him were super, super hard. Maybe because I put Walker in, I was like, oh, let's get let's get a different guy in and let's get Terang, and that's what I did. Oh, it makes sense. I think it's good that just to bring him up and remind everybody just how good of a value he was. Obviously, you know, we don't have to do too much analysis on Elliot of the Cruz. We'd like to find maybe just a little bit more consistency. That would be nice. And Bohm is, is very deserving, too. He's been terrific. He's been kind of an enigma, I feel like, for the last few years. He's had some spurts of good play, some moments where he wasn't so good, some moments where you wonder, does he have the kind of... I don't know, mental toughness to play at the major league level, let alone at the, you know, Philadelphia major league level, because that crowd can be very tough at times. Uh, outfielders, uh, Brian Reynolds, again, another guy that's just been fantastic. But Ramos and Merrill, those are the two guys I want to talk about. You were the biggest Jackson Merrill supporter that I heard going into the season. You are sounding the alarms. You're sitting here now yeah. in mid-July. The stats have been fantastic. You have to be thrilled with what you've gotten out of him. Now the question is, as the league adjusts to him, and they will, how do you see that second half going for Jackson Merrill? Can he maintain anywhere close to this pace that he's on for the Padres? Um, I think the pace is going to be a little bit difficult simply because he did stack. We know like he stacked all of that big power output kind of in a short period of time. So that'll mm -hmm. be interesting. I will say what works well in his favor, 17% K percentage in the first half. I mean, he ended up with a almost 280 average in the first half. BABIP numbers, kind of low relative. We don't have like a long-term major league uh, look at what those numbers are going to look like. So not saying he under or overperformed, but some of these guys sometimes might run like 330 BABIP. So that's 30 points lower. The negative to it is he, all that power was kind of put in a small uh, little box. He also is still not walking. He's around 4%, yeah. not just under 5%. And that's something that's going to help when those bad streaks go on. So you'd love to see him walk more. But the lack of strikeouts, the ton of content is why he was put there. And I will tell you, the this outfield team, it is tough because, again, uh, you know my whole theme here. When you're looking at value to where these guys ended up performing, Christian Yelich statistically deserves to be in there. Jerks of Profar made the real one. He probably deserves to be in that conversation. But we were also just littered with injuries that took Ronald Acuna off this. Acuna and his production would have probably supplanted anything. Corbin Carroll yeah. with the massive, massive downfall. You know, if he had had those stolen bases, could have supplanted anything. But again, you look at this outfield, Brian Reynolds, 
was the constant of constant and his production, mm -hmm. his power output was huge. He's a big second half buy for me guy. Um, he was the constant, but Ramos and Merrill, I know it's weird to put, you know, uh, Yelich just went 10, 20 in the first half. He probably deserves it. But again, Ramos, you could have picked up like a month ago and Jackson Merrill was free. So these guys all completely free, big, massive production, 14 homers from uh, Helio Ramos in the first half with a great average Jackson Merrill, same thing. These are all stars in the fantasy realm for your team. It's a mm -hmm. big win to have these three outfielders. I think it also rings true that, you know, with Soto leaving to the American League. Yeah. If you were playing in NL only leagues this year, outfield was kind of rough. Like you lost Acuna, Soto went to the AL. You're looking around here and you're trying Tatis to find guys. Got hurt. Tatis got hurt. And he was red hot when he got hurt too. So yeah. kind of a slow meandering start to the season. Then he got red hot. Then he got hurt. So it's been tough out there in those outfield streets in the National League. On the pitching side, Chris Sale and Zach Wheeler, both guys sit here at the break with a 2.70 ERA, a sub one whip. Sale has more strikeouts, 140 to 126. Uh, ironically, Reynaldo Lopez is a better ERA than both of them. So the Braves just continue to be unbelievable at finding pitching. I, I keep going back to the same thing, which is, you know, I think outside of Shohei Otani, there hasn't been a more important acquisition this offseason, even more than Soto. Because as, as important as Soto has been to the Yankees, the devastation of losing Spencer Strider in that rotation, but having Chris Sale basically pick up without missing a beat. I'm terrified to think about what might have been for the Braves had Acuna stayed healthy and had Spencer Strider stayed healthy with the way Sale is pitched. But alas, it wasn't meant to be. So now the question is, Chris Sale at 110 innings, Zach Wheeler at 116. We don't have any concerns about Wheeler, but we haven't seen a complete season from Chris Sale in some time. I think if he has a complete season, I think now the Cy Young is his to lose. Do you think that's a hot take or no? No, I don't at all. I think uh, Sale is locked. He is locked in. Mm -hmm. I mean, they almost didn't. We're going to give him a rest because you're talking about like, you know, 110 innings and Chris Sale and the injury history. They're very aware of that. That's why he's not starting the All-Star game because they wanted him to have a break and right. they were going to even push this last start out there. But he is performing at the elite Cy Young level, 270 RA and almost it's 11 and a half K per nine with a sub two walk per nine. It's unreal. I do want to make one thing here though. I, I think the mistake I made, especially with this last start, what I would have made, uh, you know, had I had the thought of it like two days ago, I would take Wheeler out for schemes because I still think from a fantasy perspective, there's some small concerns with like, you know, all right, well, how will scheme finish out and da da da. But and you guys starting the all-star game, he's been elite of elite. And if you compare him, like Wheeler, when you look at his stats, it's just, it's more valuable than most of the uh, other NL guys. You are stacked with great pitchers to choose from on your AL team. But me, Dylan Cease has kind of tapered back a little bit. You could maybe argue. Well, Rangers a great Flores. finish though. I mean, to the end of the first or to end of this all-star break by Cease. I, I respectfully disagree about the schemes. Like schemes is great. And incredibly entertaining. It's good for baseball that he's starting the all-star game and all that stuff. But I think the reliability of Zach Wheeler, the fact that we looked at so many pitchers this year who haven't returned their ADP, what Wheeler actually did, I think I think that means something. And I think we should give him some respect yeah. on that note too. I think those are the those are the three, though. Those are the three if you sure. were to do it. I might I might replace well, Glass now's in that conversation without a doubt. I mean, Glass now has been terrific. I know, you know, the injury here has not been great, yeah. but you know, he's got a sub one e uh, whip. He's got a three, four, seven area, a little higher, but 143 strikeouts. So uh, certainly an embarrassment of riches between all of them. Let's take a look at the American league all-star team. Joey P's version, Adley Rutschman, a catcher, Vlad Guerrero at first, Jose Altuve at second, Jose Ramirez at third, Gunnar Henderson at short, Aaron Judge, Soto, and Kyle Tucker, despite the injury, I still think he deserves to be there. Uh, it sucks that he's missed this chunk of time here in the middle of the season. We hope that he comes back healthy. Same with Alvarez, too, a little banged up going into the break. And then it's Scooble and Burns. It's been Scooble and Burns this entire time at Emmanuel Class A as the reliever. So, um, well, mine's a little bit chalkier than yours. Um, but I think the American League is just very clear cut in some of these spots here. Uh, I don't know if you want to argue for or against some of these guys. We can play that have, game, which I think is very fun. I have one glaring uh, omission Good. that you have in there that I think is tough. Glare at me. Who is the glaring admission that you want to fight and pound the table for? Well, it, it, the the fight is a little bit different, but you put Jordan Alvarez in at DH, which you know, like I think yeah. that makes some sense. Except you talk about the uh, the glut of riches you've got in the AL. 
Bobby Witt's not on this team. And Bobby Witt, 22 stolen bases, 16 homers, a 323 average right now. I think it's hard to argue. And I would even throw in like a Rafael Devers who has 23 well, homers in the first half. I went position by actual position. So I think that's, that's you know, that was how I took it to mean. So as we were doing it, that was my interpretation. Welsh's interpretation when we, you know, thought of doing the show was to make it a little bit more fantasy ADP return value. But my problem with Wit was I couldn't put him over Gunnar Henderson. No, Gunnar no, Henderson I has 28 agree. homers. Uh, you know, and and has you know still stealing bases and and you know leading the major leagues in runs scored. I love Bobby Witt, but Alvarez. I mean, look, sixteen sixty three. I get the twenty two steals from a fantasy perspective, super important, and and it's a great argument to have to leave him off as kind of crappy. But uh, then, am I discounting the two ninety six batting average, the nineteen homers and fifty two RBI of Alvarez? I don't think that's fair either. So it was a rock and a hard place. I decided to then go kind of with the the rules basically if you will but bobby witt here's a question for you where's bobby witt in a keeper dynasty league situation at this point for you in terms of value is he top five is he top three like how how high up the board is bobby witt for you right now he's top three right now i think so there okay. is um there's a difficult clump to deal with you've got otani Otani's older. That's, I think, the most difficult clump, mm -hmm. but is elite of elite and positionless. So Otani's there. You still have Acuna because Acuna is young, but now and and suffered and struggled a little bit before he got hurt. And then now this injury again. So those things are battling. And then you're inserting into that conversation. You're inserting Bobby Witt, who is becoming more and more consistent. That is a ridiculous first half line still with those stolen bases and homers. And the batting average is crazy. Then you're inserting... Gunnar Henderson, because Gunnar Henderson deserves this, maybe to be the number one overall guy. And then I think due to age, you can't not have Julio still in that conversation. So I think all of those guys are the top tier clump that I think dynasty rankers could probably intertwine some version of those players, but they all belong there. So I guess you could say it's like top five. I think Bobby Witt is top three because you know I think one of the biggest keys is what he is showing you is he showing you he's getting better every season? How many of these guys are we seeing not get better? Corbin Carroll regressing. Julio is going through a thing in the first half. He keeps getting better. And I think that consistency, we want to give extra kudos to. So uh, he's like top three in that range. Can I see your outfielders game? Could you put your team back sure. up on the board? Uh, I, I can. I can. It's Juan Soto, Kyle Tucker, and Aaron Judge. Look, Judge has to be on there. Uh, I mean, if only he could play the Baltimore Orioles every single day, uh, life would be just spectacular. <laughs> I mean, it is absurd, his numbers against the Orioles, but Soto has to be on there. And Kyle Tucker, I really went back and forth on the Tucker situation because That's he has missed issue. some time, but who you want to put Stephen Kwan in there? Like, I, no. I love Stephen Kwan. The batting average is really high. Riley Green is certainly a guy that I... I did consider Duran Santander. That's but, the guy, Joe. That's the one? guy right there. Jaron Duran is the one that I think I have a problem with. 10 homers, 22 stolen bases, a 283 batting average, and 62 runs. Those 62 runs, that's as much as Rafael Devers. That's more than Freddie Freeman has put up I know, this but year. for the 60 games that's that Tucker's played, more than Stephen 19... Kwan. But, but think about this, too. He's got more walks, Kyle Tucker, than strikeouts. Something you never see, right? So his yeah, OBP true. is 395. He's he's crushing OBP leagues. He's got 19 homers, 10 steals in 60 games. Now, I know the 60 games is a problem, but if I'm talking about who has performed the best and who truly is a fantasy all-star, Kyle Tucker, to me, was that guy. I was struggling, though, because Riley Green, certainly another guy that we loved. I mean, he is certainly, after a, a little bit of a concern, you know, dip in the beginning of April, He's been lights out. He's been great. Uh, but outfield again, you know, I think overall these leagues where you're seeing the, you know, five active outfielders and those 15 team leagues, those are rough patches nowadays. Like it has been yeah. really tough to find anything consistent. If you hope you got Brian Reynolds at a good clip. Uh, I want to talk about the first base too. Altuve and Ramirez to me, those were locks. Gunnar Henderson was a fun conversation with him and Bobby Witt, but Vlad Guerrero is the other guy too, where, I struggled with this one. I thought Josh Naylor deserved some love here. He's got more homers than Vlad, but the batting average was far lower, which was a little surprising. 288 for Vlad, 246 for Josh Naylor going back and forth. Uh, but it was kind of a two-horse race, and I kept going back and forth. Do you think I made the wrong decision here because Naylor has 70 RBI, or should I not penalize Vlad because Toronto has kind of been lackluster around him? 
Yeah, it's funny. This is like the only position where your side is not just absolutely stacked. Like you have really tough decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, Me personally, I have a hard time putting any guy in that's under 250. So like, I don't, I don't really blame you for going Vlad here. Mm -hmm. Like Vlad, there wasn't a massive uh, discount or there's not a value compared to where you took Naylor. Like there is a big difference, but the batting average is pretty low down there and Vlad is on the uptick. So I'm fine with this Vlad one. I would have been hard set to put Naylor in there as well. All right. And uh, obviously the pitching side of things, Scooble Burns, you can't argue. They've been absolutely brilliant. Both of them. The question is, who wins the Cy Young? Is it Burns on the more public Orioles team or Scooble, who has been right there with him, even better, arguably, in some statistical category? So we'll have to wait and see how everybody finishes and how healthy they are. Uh, and, of course, as we look to the rest of the season, that means there's going to be some call-ups, obviously. More rookies will start to play. We're going to talk about the guys in the Futures game uh, what we thought about them. Also, the MLB draft happened this past weekend. We're going to break down those guys. So look for the next video. Go click on that bad boy on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB. And we'll be back with Leading Off Live later in the week. So uh, that'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For the Welsh, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.